Our guest in this first segment is Bonnie Bell. Bonnie is a friend of the program. We've had him here for years, uh, maybe going back 10 years or so, maybe longer. Bonnie, good morning. Thanks for coming back in. Good to see you again. Good to see you, too. It's been a long time, probably about 10 10- about 13 maybe years ago yeah since we first started mm-hmm. interviewing mm-hmm. but you've been more recently than 13 years ago though okay yeah, yeah you, you, I, I had Cheyenne Webb on here yes mm-hmm. yes and that has that was only like five or six years ago mm-hmm. and we're mm-hmm. still friends I still get the chance to talk to her and see her whenever I go to Alabama that's good that's mm-hmm. nice so uh the Bonnie Bell story when we have you on always centers around breast cancer and breast cancer awareness maybe you could tell us your story and connection with it uh, a bit before we get started on some of the other things. Yes, we've been in uh, business for quite some time, for over 15 years, probably about 18, 19 years now, and it started uh, with me just raising money to help local breast cancer patients. Now it has grown to overseas. Uh, We have a hospital we work with in Kabul, in uh, Kabul Hospital in Ghana. So we have sent probably within the last four years, five years, about $50,000 worth of prosthetics and bras there with donations and with some grants that helped us as well still very active in the community helping our women here too and we still have our shop that we fit women and i still work with hospitals um on mondays i'm in fredericksburg virginia working at the mary washington cancer uh center there Mm -hmm. so i do travel a little bit we still have a store in alabama but we're going to be selling that so we're excited about the new owners coming in on that as well. But we, they're still going to keep the breast and body there to raise money to help women in Alabama as well. That's and, my goal. It's just to help. And your shop in Winchester as well. The shop is still in Winchester for now, and i still got a year and two months uh, left on that. I will be bringing it to Ranson or Charlestown. It's more centrally located. Mm-hmm. Frederick is waiting for me to get there. Hagerstown is waiting for me to get there because I have patients from – Far Lois Harrisburg, uh, Cumberland, uh, Pennsylvania, Frederick, Leesburg, you know, some very little in Sterling, but they come from all over. And, and what do you do at your shop? I fit women with the breast prosthesis and the bras. Mm-hmm. Plus, I do regular fitting for women who's large busted, too, because it's still a health problem. Mm-hmm. You know, women doesn't realize when, when you, we carry weight, for one. And then when we carry the weight, we have to have it up to balance our shoulders, our backs, our necks. Mm-hmm. So I still work closely with, with all the women. That's my ministry is women. Well, very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt, I know your wife went through uh, breast cancer as well. And this is uh, something that uh, obviously affects so many women and mm-hmm. families around the, the world and in this country every year. Yeah, absolutely. She was diagnosed in December of 2016 Mm -hmm. and uh, went through uh, mastectomy surgery in February of 2017, uh, followed with uh, chemo radiation treatments and ultimately a few other surgeries over a couple of year span. And uh, uh, praise God right now, cancer free and doing uh, very well. But uh, yeah, the the challenges that are there, um, you know, the the mental challenges, Mm -hmm. the the spiritual challenges that are a part of of not only the the, physical challenges, physical challenges and the things that are going on. So what you're doing is a fantastic thing. Uh, your your involvement in it, did it come from a personal situation where you have had breast cancer or someone in the family? How did this become your ministry? I'm your breast cancer survivor, but All I'm right. also your thyroid survivor. I'm also your skin cancer survivor. Hmm. I've had it five times. So oh my goodness. I, am the, I just was diagnosed this past February with skin, but they did get it. Right. And so I am the survivor who helps them and be able to uh, go through the mental. And, mm-hmm. and you're right. Um, I was looking and breast means bosom. It means nurturing. It means, you know, healing, you know, to, to mental state. And the largest challenge that we as women have with breast cancer, number one, we hear cancer. Number two, that's all we hear. <laughs> we mm-hmm. hear cancer. And we just want it going. And then women... Um, some women, a lot of women losing their breasts, it's, it's, it's challenging because that's who, that's who we are. That's what makes our clothes look right. You know, we wear clothes. We don't want to look like a man. We still want to look like a woman. And, you, you know, it's a challenge. Then you lose your hair, and that's another challenge because that's our crown. So it's, it's very, you know, rewarding for me that I'm able to talk to the women and minister to them. Do you do wigs then as well? And, yes. and to take us kind of through the whole gamut. How does someone get in, in contact with you? And then how does the whole process then begin? Uh, they call a shop. You want breast and body. We, it's B&B's Health Boutique. That's right. the legal name for the okay. profit. 
Breast and Body is the nonprofit, but they click mm-hmm. together because that's the only way I can help the women with it's connected. Mm-hmm. So we uh, redesigned a little bit of our name and still the same, you know, concept. But they call me, we and doctors send them to me. We set them up an appointment. I actually sit down to see what their needs are, whether it's pre-surgery, surgery after, when they come back, see what the, you know, especially lumpectomies, even reconstructions. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of reconstructions right now, it's, um, I always tell women to pray about that before they get that done. I don't, mm-hmm. I did not have it. I don't um, knock who does have it because it does work sometimes. But then there's some that doesn't work and it's failed. So that mm-hmm. makes our job challenging because of what it looks like afterwards. But not all body takes the reconstruction. Uh, but that's, that's what I do. Wigs uh, take insurances. And I had a lady come into Winchester store the other day. She came in, and the hospital sent her to me. And it was very strange because she came in. I said, what's your insurance? She told me. And I said, well, that doesn't help. But they said you would help me. Hmm. And they're right. I will help her. So I'm getting her a decent wig at no cost to her, go through the nonprofit. I don't turn anybody away. Hmm. I, and they can't afford the co-pays. I, you know, that's what we challenge right here in West Virginia is those co-pays. If we have women who has older women who has Medicare. If they do not have that supplement, that's still a twenty percent copay that they would have to have. And I, t- I could tell you right now, my mother can't afford it. Mm-hmm. She can only afford Medicare. She could not afford that supplement, so she's on fixed income. John Bodwell, the name Medicare was mentioned there in supplement. I immediately thought of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Medicare. Uh, Medicare is one thing the government does well. It does. And the Medicare supplement plans. They, I mean, they, they, they cost people mm-hmm. some money. They cost people money in premium. Mm-hmm. But on the back end, they make it where people do not have any bills mm-hmm. and everything gets taken care of. Medicare mm-hmm. supplements cover that 20% and, other, and mm-hmm. other deductibles and mm-hmm. stuff where they don't have, they don't have any expenses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had, a, I had a, a close friend of mine went through breast cancer a few years mm-hmm. ago, and she did have a reconstruction, mm-hmm. and she ended up with infections. Mm-hmm. Um, from the reconstruction surgery, she she had a couple of rounds of chemotherapy, um, had some surgeries, and then ended up with uh, ended up with really bad infections. Mm-hmm. Ended up in and out of the hospital for a while, and ended up with uh, basically IV antibiotics mm-hmm. at home for like six months. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's it's it really is. It's a difficult journey. Mm-hmm. Um, Actually, my uh, my first wife went through uh, mm-hmm. went through. See, my second wife went through breast cancer, mm-hmm. and thankfully it was not an invasive, so she didn't go through chemo or anything like that. She just had some surgery and radiation. I think, thankfully, I mean through her faith and everything, mm-hmm. she was okay. But it's, mm-hmm. I mean, what you're what you're doing is amazing. I mean, mm-hmm. it, women go through so many things, and to mm-hmm. to have somebody there who who has been through it. And who has also guided so many women through the process? That is, um, I mean, that's that's really an invaluable service that you do provide. Um, are you finding that you end up with a lot of women who've gone through the process who then end up wanting to volunteer, wanting to help? I mean, how do you how do you handle all the, all the people that that are because I mean, as I mean, you're talking about having a few locations, but as I mean, as word grows about your wonderful heart and the wonderful things spiritually and otherwise that you're doing for people, how do you find people to help you? That's challenging. It really is challenging. Um, but I do have a small group of women that does help me. I'm still looking for volunteers. I always need volunteers to help me, especially at fundraising. We have changed our fundraising a little bit this year um, because of my hours at work and with me traveling to Fredericksburg one day a week. And I'm getting older. I'm getting tired. Or, and uh, um, But it is. It, we still need somebody. And I believe with me going to Charlestown with that central location, that's going to help, and I believe that's going to bring me in more of the volunteers that I need because I'll be so close with the school systems there, and I'm hoping and praying that that would work. Um, but it's I've always looked for it. We got we changed our fundraisers. Like I said, we're going to go to one major fundraiser a year. That's it, just one major. And with my shop going to Charlestown, I'm going to leave the fundraising in Charlestown because it'd be closer for me to be able to deal with, easier, hands on. And I can go in and out the shop a little bit to go to the different location where I'm going to have the fundraiser um, and try to, you know, work between that, fixing it up. And I mean decorating and getting it all organized. Our guest is Bonnie Bell, and there is a fundraiser that you can help out with, too. And that's coming up in December. Bonnie, can you tell us about that? 
I'm excited to tell everybody about this. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people, when I was talking to them, oh, do you know Vicki Winans? No. Do you know Cece Winans? Yes. <laughs> well, they're related. They were related by marriage. Mm-hmm. Vicki Winans is a gospel, well-known gospel mm-hmm. singer. She's been around for over 30 years, and she puts on a fantastic show, Platinum. She is very, um, she called me. She got my number. <laughs> I knew somebody who knew somebody, and then she called me. <laughs> your, your, your eyes lit up when you said that. Yeah, I knew somebody who knew somebody, and then she called me. I said, this is really Vicki Wine. Is the, the true Vicki Wine? Yes. <laughs> very easy to speak, to talk to, very down to earth. Mm-hmm. And she said, I know what you do, and I want to help you. Awesome. So I have no idea what she's going to charge me. We haven't talked about it, but she said she wants to help me. So I'm being in prayer. Okay, help me means help me. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know this is a hefty fee coming up. But, and the tickets are $55. December the 9th, it's going to be a gospel, like I said, a gospel concert. And we have uh, special por- uh, guest performances by the Harumbe Gro- Gospel Choir as well from Shenandoah University. Mm-hmm. They come out and they take they you know give their time because that's how they get credits for the classes. Awesome. And we have another special guest performance by the crew, who has been who's local in the churches and they go out and sing fantastic. Both of them fantastic. Mm-hmm. So they will be bringing her on. But the key person is Vicky Winans. And this is December nine. Where? To be determined. I'll know by September nineteenth. I was um, Shepherd University has offered the ballroom upstairs which is you know for low cost but it limits me to just 200 tickets i believe we can sell more than that with your help with coming on here getting the word out i didn't want to be limited to 200 tickets so i have applied at the school system um and i should know by september 18th when they have their meeting how will you be selling the tickets, or is that also determined Event? by the location? No, we're tickets are for sale right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have it on Eventbrite page, and they can call me at the store, um, and I can give you that number, which is 540-313-4705, and by myself, 540-455-6670. And as more information comes, be more numbers out there that they can call. But Eventbrite is the way you can do it uh, right yes. off your phone. They can go on Eventbrite. It's already set up. They can start purchasing tickets. But I know I have a couple of people that want to go ahead and start purchasing their tickets today. So it's December 9th. Does that mean this will be kind of Christmas themed? Yes. I like the Christmas theme. I do too. I love it. I think it brings more. Um, Christmas to me is bringing the heart out of people. Mm-hmm. And they're more generous. They're more giving. Because they're more humble at Christmas time, I've noticed that they they love Christmas so much till mm. they they want a good time. They just want to be humble. Mm. They want to be nice. So Bonnie, my question is: If we first met 13 years ago, yes. So how come if I look at a picture of me from 13 years ago, <laughs> I've aged, but you haven't? How, I've how aged. Has that, how has that happened? <laughs> I've aged. <laughs> Might not look like it, but I've aged. I feel it inside. Yeah. <laughs> I have. <laughs> God bless you. are doing great work out Thank there, you. and you've been through enough yourself, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you, you know what you're talking about when you meet with these folks, and I imagine yes. that helps in your relationship with them and getting them to trust you to do the work that you need to do. Yes, it does, especially, you know, when they come in and say, well, I've had it for three times. I say, okay, well, I still am beating you on this one, mm-hmm. and I don't want it anymore. I've had it now for five times, so mm-hmm. no more for me. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. Well, uh, maybe you could take us back to what inspired you from the very beginning to do this specialized and specific work that you do. I was uh, at the hospital, chemo, and I looked around and I I thought I was bad, but I've seen, um, and and they were worse. They were really worse. And then when I started, um, we started raising money a long time ago. It wasn't breast and body. It was like Sisters United just to help people. Then I seen there was a need out there. And my mother was one of, you know, she didn't have cancer. Well, she said, well, Bonnie, I can't afford my copac and only afford Medicare because the, mm-hmm. the supplement is very hefty. Mm-hmm. Um, so I said, okay. So I started researching and noticing that there was a lot of need and people were being turned mm-hmm. away because they cannot afford the 20%. They didn't mm-hmm. have it. I will not take that. So I would, you know, I told him, I said, don't worry about money with me. Come to me. That's what, that's what started it all. It was just money. It was just the need out there that 
women were going without anything. They were just stuffing their bras. And then I found a need overseas. I was approached one time um, about that. And so then I, with the government getting the prosthesis overseas, they selling them, and the women could not afford them. I spoke at Chandler University one time. It was the same thing. The government is just selling the prosthesis, and the women who really need them couldn't get them. They was making money. That's not, you know, I need the money. I'm not going to lie to anybody. We all need money to out here. We're in the United States. Um, but I question how much money do we really need? And I think that's been a problem all along. And I, I, I do need it. But I'm also here to help them with the need. I don't look at it like that. I don't look at it as a million-dollar company. I don't look at it as me making a million dollars. I, I don't need that kind of money. It doesn't take that much money to live on. I live within my means. Mm-hmm. Um I'm there to to give and to lend a hand. Bonnie, um, the, I know Jackie Long made a comment. I hope WRR announces when tickets go on sale. They are on sale now, Jackie. They're on sale, yes. Yeah, they're you, on sale now. You can get them by going on Eventbrite, looking up, uh, what should they look up under on, on Eventbrite? By Vicky Wine's concert. Vicky Wine's concert, mm-hmm. okay. It's under Vicky, yeah. This is December 9. You can also call Bonnie Bell at 540, mm-hmm. th- uh, is that 513? 313. 313. I can't read my own writing. Mm-hmm. Matt knows that. <laughs> and then that's 4700. 4705. Make sure I write this again. 313 I, I, I can't tell you. Oh, go on. I'm sorry. That's yeah. okay. 540 Now I can read it. Yeah. I, or 4550. Yep. Four five five sixty six seventy. Yes, no, that one I wrote well. Yes, <laughs> I was trying to write quickly while you were talking. So. I I can't tell you the amount of times that's happened to me where I've written something down and then I couldn't read it. It happened <laughs> yesterday. I read somebody's phone number back to them. They said, "No, no, no, that's not it. It's four one three. It looked like a seven. Uh, you got a shout out also from Shalonda Winston. She said, "Hey, Mrs. Bonnie Bell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, Thank you, uh, Brad Knoll. Great to see Bonnie Bell on the radio. Wonderful lady. That is extremely active." Yes, in the community, he knows. Know you out there. Yes, and it's kind of funny to hear that sentence there in 2023. This actually does make sense. Great to see her on the radio. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, (laughs) 15 years ago, that wouldn't have made sense. Now now it does make uh, a lot of sense too. Uh, Bonnie, what would you like all the women out there listening to know right now if they're maybe just facing this uh, uh, diagnosis for the first time? They're hearing Mm -hmm. the news. Call me. Just call me. I'm here. I'm here to listen. I'm here to help. And all of my customers, and I have over a thousand customer base, knows that. Mm-hmm. Now I'm here to help. And anyone who knows me in Martinsburg mm-hmm. and in Jefferson County knows I put a lot in yeah. to my people. And I'm so, sure word of mouth. Word yeah. of mouth is the largest. Yeah, right. Absolutely. That is the largest um, advertisement I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, I've spent money in advertisement, and I've never got any two. I never got anything in return except for the hospitals and word of mouth. Let me just state for all of our advertisers out there: she never <laughs> advertised with us, though. No, no I did not. No, I did not. You I, mean, I, I, I did not. I, need- I cannot tell you who I advertised with. I do not want to put anyone down, but uh-huh. I've tried the the other. I've tried the other mm-hmm. advertising, mm-hmm. and it did not work. Mm-hmm. It didn't. So. I tell you, I, I've been advertising on the station here for a long time, and we get a, we get a great mm-hmm. response out of it. You do. That's the only yeah. radio station that I get a great response on, and that mm-hmm. is the truth. Yeah, we get a great every time great I come response. on. And, and that's, I'm gonna, it's going to sound like I'm sucking up to our audience, but I'm not. I'm stating a fact. We have a great, mm-hmm. yeah. yes, wonderful, do. diverse audience. We yes. do. I mean, it, it encompasses every demographic mm-hmm. uh, that you want to look for. Uh, it listens to this radio station and watches TV 10 for a variety of different reasons. And you're absolutely correct. Because, Rob, every time I come on here, mm-hmm. I do get good response. And that is the truth. Bonnie, I hear that from um, so yeah, many of our I guests. I get the best response mm-hmm. from WRNR. I do. Yeah, they have a great well, loyal audience here. Well, in, in addition to that, I mean, studies have shown many, many studies through the years that people who listen to talk radio are more affluent. Mm-hmm. I mean, just quite frankly, the listeners, the listeners a, at a talk radio station are consumers. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a great way. I've, I, it's helped my business immensely. Bonnie, uh, maybe you could take us through, you, you, the, you've taken us through the physical end of this, and, and Matt, you can talk to this subject as well. What about the emotional and, and mental struggle of this issue of breast cancer? It, it is a struggle, I can tell you from my experience. Um, we want to live. I know the first time I heard it, my children were young, 
And the only thing I pray for is to allow me to see my children graduate. Mm -hmm. I just want them grown. I just want to see them graduate. Well, not only have I saw them graduate, I am now a great, 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 no, that's not too great. One great <laughs> grandmother. <laughs> I am a great grandmother. Uh, so I, you know, God has far exceeded anything that I could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And he is not, and I've been told, he's not done with me yet. Doesn't matter how tired I am, he is not done with me yet. I still have energy in me to keep mm -hmm. going and keep doing the things I do. But the emotional is just sitting down, talking to them, hugging mm -hmm. them, letting them know everything is going to be okay. Do I hear stories when they tell me what they have? And I know pretty much what the outcome is? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I also tell them they will live. Mm -hmm. Might not be on this side, but they will live. They will live for a long time. And I never talk anything negative. I always try to give them hope. I always speak hope into them. And, um, and I'm always there for them. I, am al I don't have a lot of bad customers. All my customers just keeps coming back. And, and really, and some of them has poured into me by prayer. Yeah. I've had that, which, which helps me sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, and I needed that. So, yeah. December 9th, the yes. concert event. Uh, did I miss a time? When when will this the take place? The doors will open at 5 o'clock. Okay. The concert will start at 6. All right. And I will know a place by before the end of this month. I'm pretty I, a, a place I really wanted. Yeah. I waited for it. <laughs> I patiently waited for it, and I think it's going to come through. But I don't want to put it out there <laughs> until it's signed and sealed. Uh, I got a, a text for you. It says, oh. if you have a chance, tell Bonnie Uganda is calling. Steve Redding. I know. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Steve. But we just had that conversation the other night. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the other one. I didn't want, and I, he was on my mind this morning because of that, because we have Ghana. Mm -hmm. But he wants me to go to Uganda with me with him too. He's going to go in April, and I he's got a task though. He's got to see what's over there. He knows what's over there, but I need to know. Mm -hmm. What is the need? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. much need? What can I do? And then my goal, if I can raise enough money, have enough fundraiser, have enough volunteers, and if everyone's listening, this is what's going to get me to Ghana. This is what's going to get me to Uganda. It's help. And that's what I need. Bonnie Bell, it is always great to see you. You're a very uplifting mm -hmm. person, and thank you have you. the best smile ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you. You're very welcome. And again, throw out those phone numbers on how to get tickets for this concert coming up. 540-313-4705. 540-455-6670. And if I don't answer, I would definitely call you back. On Eventbrite, look under what to find tickets? Vicki Winans. Great to see you again. You too.